Hello everyone, uh, I am Pritham, currently working as a software engineer at AppScot and uh, today I will uh, demonstrate how to provision and uh, manage Solar on Kubernetes cluster using uh, KubeDB. So first of all, we will go through the table of content. Uh, I will describe Solar uh, shortly and after uh, that, uh, we will uh, describe the features and uh, specifications uh, provided by uh, Solar. And uh, then well, I will describe the Solar architecture shortly as well. And after that, I will show live demo. And in live demo, we will provision uh, Solar uh, in our Kubernetes cluster using KubeDB and uh, describe uh, certain uh, features and specifications provided by KubeDB as well. And finally, we will have a short Q&A session. So uh, Solar is a document uh, and document retrieval uh, library, uh, which is uh, responsible uh, for uh, which is responsible for document retrieval and uh, application analysis as well. Uh, it can uh, it can uh, it can process uh, structured data, unstructured data, or uh, metadata as well. Uh, we can uh, we can search and uh, query uh, data on the basis of certain keywords. And we can also categorize the search result uh, into various facets or uh, groups uh, on the basis of uh, certain keywords. And uh, this feature is actually called uh, faceting. And uh, it comes with NoSQL support as well. That means we can insert or insert, update or query data uh, in uh, in uh, our, in uh, Solar uh, using its uh, real time uh, real time uh, query and uh, search and query performance. And uh, we can also we can also fetch uh, certain uh, keywords uh, from uh, Solar uh, using its tokenizing uh, feature uh, feature as well. And uh, finally, it also comes with advanced analysis, which can uh, which can analyze rejects expression as well. And uh, then I will go through the Solar architecture here. We can see several uh, components here actually. The first component is request handlers. Uh, uh, any Solar in any uh, any request is actually processed by uh, this uh, this uh, certain uh, component. First of all, uh, in case of a request uh, hand request, we can have uh, multiple uh, types of requests like uh, insert, query, or uh, update. Uh, based on the requirements, we have to select a certain uh, request handler actually. Then we have a response writer, which is responsible. Uh, for uh, for uh, generating outputs uh, for user queries and uh, in uh, case of outputs and uh, this uh, can be generated in certain formats like uh, xml or json and then we also have uh, multiple search components uh, here actually like uh, it, it has certain features like uh, query uh, spell checking or uh, faceting uh, a certain uh, search handle is registered for each feature here then uh, solar has also the, the solar also has also the feature of a configurable uh, schema uh, while uh, inserting indexes uh, schema is uh, configurable schema can be configured dynamically here and then we have update handlers any update request is uh, uh, any update request will go through this component first of all and it, it, it it's actually a collection of uh, plugins and which will uh, which will uh, which will process the update requests and then we have another component called uh, is extracting a request handler uh, it's a wrapper on apache tika which is responsible uh, for extracting metadata or content from uh, certain documents and solar is actually solar is actually a wrapper on apache lucene which is a text analysis uh, analysis function which will which will provide text analysis functionalities then another uh, component we have is actually index replication uh, it actually uh, it, 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 it actually uh, distribute uh, distribute uh, data among shards and uh, after that i will uh, describe uh, how uh, how to provision solar in kubedb as uh, in case uh, of uh, kubedb actually in our kubernetes cluster uh, provisioner operator will be running there and it will watch our solar resource and uh, this uh, and this uh, provisioner operator will uh, will create uh, necessary resources like uh, stateful search service pvcs or uh, secrets uh, while we apply that uh, solar custom resource in our kubernetes cluster and after that, uh, a certain process called health checking will uh, will be running in our cluster, and and uh, I will discuss about it uh, later. And uh, while we while deleting solar, we all have another attribute called termination policy, which is responsible for controlling which uh, resources to be retained in the in in our cluster after deletion. Uh, so we have uh, four termination policies here. Uh, first one is halt. If we apply this, then all the secrets and PVCs will be retained in our cluster. In case of uh, delete, only secrets will be retained. And if our termination policy is wipe out, then no trace of the database will be remained in our cluster. But in case of do not terminate, uh, a user will not be able to uh, delete database actually. Uh, we will be running Solar in Solar Cloud mode. That means we need an external zookeeper to run Solar. 
Now, Zookeeper uh, is actually uh, responsible uh, for uh, storing and uh, managing the uh, configuration files like solar config XML or uh, related files like that. It also controls uh, failover, leader election, recovery, and uh, re uh, recovery. So now we will discuss discuss the features and specifications which KubeDB will uh, bring. Uh, first of all, we have built-in UI here. Uh, it's actually a, a UI which uh, we can uh, see by simply port forwarding the cluster. And after that, we have customizable health checker. In case of health checking, first of all, we ping in the cluster. Either we get any response from that or not. And if we get a response after that, we will actually check read and write access as well. If we can read write properly, then then we can then our cluster is ready actually, and then uh, Solar also has custom configurable uh, feature. Uh, we can apply a custom configuration uh, with uh, our uh, database, uh, which will override the default configuration. Then we also have persistent volume, uh, which means which is responsible for retaining data in our cluster, and. Uh, Using uh, this, uh, this uh, and uh, our that means uh, if we uh, restart the cluster or or we delete and recreate it, then our data will be retained in the cluster. After that, we have multiple termination policy. I have already described about it. And finally, we have default security context, which means our uh, our we can run our database in uh, in uh, in secured cluster as well. Even if our namespace is restricted, still we can uh, deploy solar in our uh, cluster seamlessly. And uh, I will be using uh, KubeDB to deploy uh, Solar uh, on uh, Kubernetes. Uh, KubeDB is the one-stop solution to uh, to uh, deploy your production grid database on Kubernetes cluster. So, and uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can install uh, KubeDB from the Helm chart shown here. And now I will uh, show the live uh, demo actually. Now here you can uh, see that we already have uh, a Zookeeper uh, running here and uh, this will coordinate with my solar cluster. So first of all, I will uh, like to uh, describe my YML, uh, like the attributes and all I have there. So let me start with that. So here is our YML. First of all, obviously API version and kind, kind is solar here. It's a solar custom resource. And after that, I have metadata, which uh, contains the name and namespace uh, here. Uh, name is solar cluster and uh, namespace is uh, demo. Uh, I will, uh, this is the version of uh, my uh, solar and uh, my termination policy is halt. That means uh, I will have secret and uh, PVC even if I delete the cluster. Then I have my Zookeeper reference, and uh, this is uh, ZK cluster, which is actually already deployed in my uh, Kubernetes cluster. Then I have the topology, then I am running this in uh, topology mode. Uh, in case of topology mode, I have three types of node. That means three stateful sets will be created after deploying this uh, this uh, this custom resource. So uh, in case of overseer, it actually coordinates and the it actually coordinates the cluster and decides how shards will be uh, distributed and in the among the pods. After that, I have data. These data pods will mainly uh, store the shards and replicas. And after that, we have coordinator. Okay, this coordinator uh, stateful this coordinator pods uh, will just uh, store the shards uh, for if our uh, if our cluster is too uh, too big, then uh, then it's uh, very helpful for uh, querying. So now I can uh, apply this uh, apply this uh, cluster. So the main utility of this uh, topology mode is uh, the memory consumption. We can we, I have I have I have provided three GB memory for data pot and band only hundred m hundred uh, megabyte memory for uh, this over overseer and uh, coordinator. So now we can uh, deploy this here. Uh, we can uh, see our uh, solar uh, custom resource uh, here. It's in the provisioning uh, state currently, and still we haven't uh, got any pods actually. Uh, it will take a while uh, maybe to get pods. Uh, here it is. Here is our first uh, pod. Uh, it's a data pod here, and other pods will also come slowly. We have to uh, you have to wait uh, till the pods uh, go into the running state.
we can see over here is in the running state now uh, two data ports will be created here uh, one is in the running state and another one is still uh, provisioning the need container So here it is, all four ports are in the running state now. Uh, it will take a while to get ready now, I guess. It should not take much time. And now if we describe the solar uh, custom resource here, actually. Here it is, you can see that all replicas are already, all replicas are ready and the database is uh, showing provisioning still now. Uh, we can see that uh, read write check is succeeded. Uh, now we can see that database write access check succeeded is true here. So now uh, very soon we can see that this will um, go through the ready state as well as. Uh, it should not take uh, much time now, actually. Yes, uh, it's in the ready state now. Now actually we can uh, port forward to uh, see the current state of the cluster actually. If we uh, port forward here, it will ask for a password maybe. It will ask for the password I guess. Now we can uh, simply just uh, go through the local host of that. Uh, Here it is, uh, it's our login page. It's actually asking the password. So our uh, username is admin and we have to provide a password here. So what is the password? I have to get that from here. So this is my uh, password. If I just provide it here, here is our cluster. I can see if I go through the cloud and uh, here we can see the uh, memory, cons memory, memory consumption here and uh, in the zookeeper status zookeeper status is green and if we go through the nodes then three and then we have a graph the number of uh, shards and uh, replicas we can see here as well total number of collection collections will be displayed uh, here and okay uh, so that's it uh, security is enabled uh, basic we have applied uh, basic auth plugin here so uh, i can uh, insert uh, another uh, another uh, collection here i guess so Let's uh, start with that. We can uh, we can insert a uh, insert a document here. Like, what can be the name of the collection? We can go through it. Documentation link. Okay, I will create a collection here and the name of uh, my collection can be a uh, car, I guess. So, okay, let's edit the name here. So, I will insert a, uh, insert a collection here, first of all. So, here it is. I have inserted a collection here. It will have uh, three shards and uh, each shard will have three replicas. So our collection is inserted here successfully. You can see status is here. So in, in case of solar, status zero means uh, our operation has been successful. 
So I can actually uh, insert a document here as well uh, in the in this collection. So for that, I have to apply another uh, curl command. So this is my command actually, and I have to update the name of the collection. If I apply it here, here it is, status is zero. That means our collection is, uh, collection is uh, actually inserted successfully. We can uh, check it from here as well, from our, uh, uh, from our uh, UI, uh, if I uh, go in, in the, if I go here, then we can see, you can see here, we have a collection called uh, car here, it has uh, three replicas, and uh, among uh, three, it's actually a shard, and uh, that shard has uh, three replicas, you can see one will be the leader here, and uh, in each shard, and there will be one leader, and others uh, two will be uh, followers, so this is uh, the feature of the built-in UI actually. So we can also apply a custom configuration here. Actually, if we apply custom configuration, then this uh, this solar is actually provisioned with the default configuration. If we apply custom configuration, then our custom configuration will override the default configuration there. So finally, now uh, this uh, that was a live demo. And after that, we have some feature plans as well, uh, like uh, monitoring will be uh, implemented uh, in future releases. Uh, we can uh, we can see the cluster state uh, through the Grafana dashboards as well. And after that, uh, backup and restore will be uh, implemented. And finally, we will have uh, TLS as as well. And uh, now uh, uh, we will have a short Q and A session. So, any question? I think there is no much question from anyone. So, so thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining. I hope you find it insightful. Uh, that's all from my side.